Hello Matthew Williams here with a quick video to say that I had problems with my Mavic today and I found out what the solution was so I'm going to share that with you. Okay first thing is what do you notice about this Mavic which is different? It's not the battery not being there by the way. What do you notice about this Mavic being different and it's not the tape I use to keep the uh, little rubber thing on the, the plexiglass but what do you notice about this Mavic which is different. Anybody got it? Well, staring you right in the face, it's the propellers. They're not the stock propellers. I believe the stock propellers are these ones and they look slightly different. Let's get a pair out so you can see. They're not as long. As you can see they're not quite as long and they're also, let's have a little look, they're also a little bit thinner here so they're not quite as wide as these, as you can see. So a little bit thinner. So basically these don't produce as much thrust. Now, what that means is that in our RPM terms, the blades can turn slower and produce the same amount of thrust as these can. Okay, now what was my problem? I can show you the footage. Um, I took off and my my gimbal was was fluttering. It was going which led me to believe that it was the gimbal at fault. And I played around and I I recalibrated the gimbal. I also recalibrated the IMU of the copter. Didn't make any difference. And it was sort of vibrating up and down. I even tried very carefully putting my finger down on top and seeing if there was vibration, touching from underneath, seeing if there's vibration. There was no vibration really that I could feel, that I, I could tell was there. There was vibration, but it didn't feel like there was, so it was kind of fooling me a bit. Okay, so I tried everything and I was thinking, I am going to have to send this back and get this repaired. And then I realised something. What was the difference? What was the thing that was different that had that might be fooling it. What was the thing that was different? It was the propellers. Now, because these propellers are longer and wider and they're producing more thrust, the RPM is lower. So that's a change in the dynamics of the way the craft flies. And also, for less RPMs, producing more thrust, it means that, let's imagine we give it, uh, say, 10. Let's imagine a figure of 10, and the copter will move this much, okay? Well, a, a figure of just 8 of power, 8 of power, will give you the same amount of movement using these propellers. So 10 would move that much, only eight would need be required with these propellers to do the same amount of work. So what this means is that the little misunderstood setting in your controller called advanced gains would need to be changed in order to accommodate this. Now I did explain it before but when you have the aircraft in flight, I will show you, I'll put the arms out to make it even easier for you to understand. Uh, not that you're really going to need to understand much, it's fairly self-explanatory. But this does not mean you're controlling it, okay? Imagine you do not touch the controller, you take the aircraft off and it goes into a hover. Okay, now then, of course wind will blow it and it will, and it will try to correct itself. So if it finds itself on its side and you have no stick input on the controller, it will go, I'm on my side, I need to correct. And it will correct and straighten itself up. Now, when everything is in balance and you're using the original blades that came from DJI, the copter is set up so that 100% in all of the gains, that's the pitch gain, the roll gain, and the yaw gain, and the vertical height gain. Okay, so all those are 100%. If there's no added weight, if there's no extra weight because you're using the stock battery and you haven't attached anything like no propeller guards, okay? Otherwise it'll throw what I'm telling you out. So no propeller guards, just a standard stock unit. 100% gain on all of those things should mean that it flies perfectly. But what happens if you introduce propellers 
that give you more thrust. Well, what will happen is um, if the copter gets moved onto its side and it provides the original 100% action to go back, it's going to overcompensate because there's more thrust for that power. Remember we said you only need eight to kind of do the same job? And that don't go with these numbers, by the way. This is just for example. But, so there we are. Let's imagine the aircraft gets blown by a bit of wind here, down in this direction, down the front. So it gets blown. It detects it's been blown. It applies the 100% gain and corrects. That's fine. But when you've got these blades, 100% is too much. So instead of just coming back, it overcorrects and, and pitches up, which means it has to then correct to get straight again. Now, this is called an over oscillation, okay? Because too much command here means you have to provide another command to correct it, which will be too much because it's going to over command again because it's, it's at 100 when it should maybe be at 80, okay? Or something near that. So it will over command again and it will over command and it will over command and over command and this is known as an oscillation. Now, severe oscillations can be seen. The copter will do this or this or this, okay, or this and keep doing it. But when it's very slight, when it's very slight, it can happen so fast that it's very hard for you to see it, okay, and it can happen in any of those directions. Now, the fluttering of the gimbal was caused by a very subtle vibration, which I wasn't able to, to detect by touching and feeling. It was so so smooth and so, so light. Plus, it was probably doing what they can call um, constructive interference. There's destructive and constructive interference. Uh, destructive interference would mean that if something was vibrating, it would slow the vibration down. Constructive interference would mean when something is vibrating, it might get into sympathy, into harmonics, and make it vibrate even more. And I believe that's what was happening here. But anyway, away from those technical terms, what are we saying? If we turn these gains down in the menu, yeah, then if we push the craft over, instead of giving 100% back, if we give it just 80% back because these are doing more effect, effective work, if we give it 80 or 90 back, then it's going to correct back to the correct level. Whereas when you had these blades on, it had to be 100% and it would come back perfect. 100% on these, it's going to go, whoa, too much. So it's going to go, I've gone too much. And it'll go, whoa, and it'll go back, but it'll be too much. And then it'll get, probably get smaller and probably just flutter in the middle. So what you have to do is you have to keep turning the gain down very, very small amounts, like 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, until you notice that this flutter's gone and that this isn't fluttering anymore. So I thought it would be, you know, safe to take it down 5%. Um, I ended up taking it down another 5%, so we're at 90%. And I took it down to 89 And then this wasn't fluttering anymore. So that's the explanation of how gain works so that you can understand that if it's fluttering, then that's bad. But also, if we take it down too much, it won't correct enough. So if we take it down to, say, 70, what you'll find is if I wind or my finger goes like this, it'll probably come back to here, and then it'll slowly correct. So if I go like that, it'll go, uh, and still have a bit of angle on it. So if I go like this, it'll come back, but not enough. It needs to get to there. So... 70 might go like that and it'll come back but not enough okay 60 would mean if i went like this it'll probably come back and stay like that then slowly come back but all of this being at the wrong angle would mean that it would fly away in a little bit into a different direction so you know it might sort of go oh and slowly settle over here okay now if the if the gains tend to be correct when you when you bump something, it tends to come back and stop. Bump it again, it'll come back and stop in the same place. If you haven't got enough gain on, it might go bump and then it'll end up over here. So that can be another way to identify. But 
over oscillations were what we were getting. So we solved that and we took it down 1% at a time, or I took it 5 because I'm a bit cheeky. But um, that's the type of thing you're looking for. And uh, too little gain could mean that it doesn't correct and it might flip and uh, it might end up on the floor. This is why DGI tell you don't play with the settings if you don't know what you're doing. And I take no responsibility for accidents caused by putting these settings in. But the settings I used were 89 for pitch, 89 for roll, 89 for yaw, and 100 for vertical. I kept that one at 100, and that seemed to work quite nicely. Um, obviously done at your own risk, but if you're using the new blades, you may, it's not guaranteed, but you may need to use these settings. If you go back to using the old blades, for goodness sake, put the settings back to 100 where they were, okay? And never mix and match blades, okay? You cannot do that. You'll, you'll crash very easily. If you're going to change the blades, you have to change all the blades. Don't mix and match. So if you get one of these smashes and you don't have, just put the old ones back on and then change all the gains back, but at your own risk. So I hope this has helped explain a little bit of the physics behind what's going on. And if you notice things like the, the, the thing making noise and vibrating up and down continuously when the, when the copter seems to be fairly fairly nicely uh, flying. If you notice that, that's your problem. It may not be, mm, but it could be. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching.